Hey, this is Mr. Aiden. This is going to be the 2021 AP Chemistry free response question number one. This is the just released exam of the 2021 AP Chemistry exam. If you're a student or you're a teacher that's looking to prepare for AP Chemistry or looking to teach AP Chemistry, make sure you go to MrAiden.com. I have uh, hundreds and hundreds of multiple choice questions at a very, very, very low price, as well as free response questions. Everything you need in order to get a five on that AP Chemistry exam. But let's get to this AP chemistry exam that we just did and in 2021 and it starts with question number one and this is an acid base equilibrium question you can see that by a weak acid a ka the k is 1.8 times 10 to the negative fourth and you can see this is methanoic acid methanoic acid and so with methanoic acid the first thing they ask us to do is to write a Ka expression. So let's get to that Ka expression. The Ka is always the products, so we have the H3O plus. We're going to put little brackets there because it's concentration. Times, not plus, times the HCOO minus, the conjugate base. All over the weak acid, the H. COOH. This is primary topics of equilibrium. If you are with MrRaden.com, we don't put a liquid because liquids don't have a concentration. Now the next thing they ask us to do, that's probably worth one point, and you can see the next thing they ask us to do is find the pH of a 0.25 molar solution. So we know the Ka is 1.8 times 10 to negative fourth. Again, this is what I call primary topics of equilibrium. The HCOOH was 0.25 molar, and it's going to go down by some value of x because some of it will start to dissociate, a very, very small percentage. And it's going to dissociate equally, a one-to-one -one ratio, between the H3O plus, the conjugate acid, and the HCOO minus, the conjugate base. Now we can assume that this 0.25 molar minus the x is pretty much equal to 0.25 molar. Because it's a weak acid, it's going to dissociate at a very, very low percentage. So we can multiply this 1.8 times 10 to negative 4 times 0.25, square root it to find my x. And what is x? Always put what x is. x is the H3O plus, as well as the HCOO minus. And that ends up becoming 0.0067 molar when I do this uh, this algebra. And you can see how we always want to put who it's assigned to and also its units. And we round the two significant digits since there's two significant digits in the problem right here. And then if I want to find the pH, the pH is equal to the negative log of the H3O plus, which means I can negative log this x value here and I get a pH of 2.17. We always take our pH to uh, two decimal places for pH because that's all what all pH meters actually round to. And so that is question number one, A and B. And let's go on to C. C is asking us now to go from an equilibrium problem to drawing a L Lewis electron dot diagram. And so we know H's always do single bonds, don't they? And we know if we have COH, it's going to be C COH with two unshared pairs, making that a bent uh, structure. Hydrogen bonding attraction is right there, 105 degrees. We know if it's COOH, we're going to have a double bond with two unshared pairs, and this gives you this trigonal planar 120 degree shape right there, sp2 hybridized, and that is the Lewis electron dot diagram for HCOH, that methanoic acid. Let's come on to D. Now D uh, gives us a KB, a weak base problem, and you can see H2 and an H2, and it dissociates into this conjugate acid and this conjugate base. And you can see this conjugate acid right here, this conjugate base, the H2O en ended up giving the H plus, so that was acting as a weak acid. You can see the OH minus, which means we know it's a KB problem. And we want to write the balanced net ionic reaction that occurs between this weak base and this weak acid right here. So again, if you're with MrRaden.com, this is one of our big 25 reactions. Uh, our big 25 reactions are very, very, very important. So we have H2 and NH2 plus this methanoic acid, HCOH. And you can see how this methanoic acid is going to give away 
a proton, an H+. Plus. It's going to give away an H+. Plus. And so what are we going to get? We're going to get H2 and an H3+. Plus. That's our conjugate acid in this reaction up here. And we're going to get C, sorry, H COO minus, that was my conjugate base from the previous reaction. And that is our balanced net ionic reaction between a weak acid and a weak base. We end up getting a conjugate acid and a conjugate base on the other side. Now the next thing is asking is, is the resulting solution acidic, basic, or neutral? Now you may think, oh, we have a weak acid and a weak base, it's going to neutralize, right? Well, it does do a little bit of neutralization, but take a look right, right here. We have 50 milliliters of 0.25 molar of our weak base, 50 mils of 0.25 molar of our weak acid. So we have the same number of moles of our weak acid, our H2NNH2, as the HCOOH. And you might think, oh, then it's going to be a total neutral solution. Well, we have to take a look at how these two things dissociate. And I hope you can see, if we come back over here, the Ka for this, for the HCOH, is 1.8 times 10 to negative 4. Okay, so the Ka for HCOH is 1.8 times 10 to negative 4. The Kb for this H2 and an H2 is 1.3 times 10 to negative 6. That means that this Ka is larger. The Ka is larger than the Kb. And so that means that the HCOOH will dissociate at a greater percentage. And if the HCOOH dissociates at a greater percentage, since the volume and the concentration are the same, that means that our resulting solution will be slightly acidic because there's more acid, there's more H3O plus in there than there is OH minus. You can actually calculate the percentages, but that uh, looking at the relationship between the Ks and KBs, that's final topic of equilibrium if you're with MrAiden.com and that answers that question. Now the next question, part E says, when a catalyst is added to this HCOH, it breaks down according to this reaction. It breaks down into hydrogen gas and carbon dioxide gas, both London dispersion forces, both linear, linear molecules, and they ask, is this a redox reaction? So the first thing we got to take a look at is our oxidation numbers. Oxidation numbers. And we're going to take a look at our oxidation numbers of HCOOH. Uh, we know H here is plus 1. We know H here is plus 1. We know the oxygens are negative 2 and negative 2. Okay, Oxygen is always going to be negative 2 oxidation number unless it's oxygen gas by itself or unless it is in like a peroxide. And so we have negative 4 overall, positive 2, which means this carbon is positive 2. And you can see as it breaks down, it breaks down into hydrogen gas. And what times itself is equal to a zero charge? Well, that's got a zero charge. And then we have carbon dioxide, CO2. I know the oxygen is negative two. There's two of them, so it's negative four overall, which means the carbon is going to be plus four. And so you can see we had charges changing. We had the hydrogens going from plus one oxidation number to zero we had the carbon going from plus two all the way to plus four. You can see this hydrogen, it gained electrons, gaining negative electrons is called reduction. And you can see this carbon lost electrons, lost negative electrons, it became more positive, that's oxidation. Leo the line goes, grr. And so you can see, yes, this is a redox reaction. And again, um, it is a redox reaction. And why is it a redox reaction? Because the oxidation numbers are changing. Again, big 25 reactions. Take a look at MrAiden.com. The next one, uh, you can see the reaction occurs in a rigid 4.0 liter vessel. So I know volume, I know temperature, and total pressure is monitored. 
okay? And we want to calculate the number of moles, the number of moles. And so right, right away, what we think about, it, it's a pressure problem. So we're going to use PV equals NRT, Pivner. You can see the pressure is 4.3 liters. The volume, uh, sorry, that's the volume, 4.3 liters, my bad. Volume is 4.3 liters. We want to know the pressure. Well, the pressure was at equilibrium at 24 atmospheres. So we're going to use 24 ATM atmospheres. We're trying to find the N number of moles. R is 0 0.08206. That's liters, atmospheres over moles Kelvin. That's on your equation sheet. And 25 degrees Celsius always needs to be in Kelvin. That's 298 Kelvin. And I'm just going to do a little bit of algebra and the number of moles ends up becoming 4.22 moles of carbon dioxide. Again, always put your units, moles, and what it's assigned to, carbon dioxide. Uh, you can round to 4.2 moles. Uh, they probably would accept three significant digits of 4.22. Uh, it's probably best to call that 4.2 moles because we have two significant digits everywhere. And then the very last part of the problem, G, it says after direction has proceeded for several minutes, does the amount of the catalyst increase, decrease, or remain the same? The catalyst always remains the same. All a catalyst does is it speeds up the reaction by lowering the activation energy. It lowers the activation energy. You can see the amount of catal catalyst will essentially remain the same because a catalyst is neither part of the, re the reaction in terms of reactants or products. Uh, it only lowers the activation energy and so the catalyst will remain the same. And that is the 2021 AB Chemistry free response question number one. Hope this helps. Uh, make sure you take a look at mysteryaid.com or take a look at my YouTube channel as well for all other helps with AP Chemistry. Thanks, guys. I'll see you on the next one.